It is January 1st, 2021. We're here on the rooftop of the property at 7955 El Paso Street in La Mesa, California, 91942. We're going to go ahead and inspect the sewer mains. We have two bathrooms. We're here over the hall bathroom, and then across on the other side of the rooftop is the master bathroom. So we know that they intersect together, so what we did before we started this, uh, and the house is vacant, we ran water through all the fixtures in the house to make sure that there's no standing water in the pipes. Everything's supposed to have downhill slope, and if there's any buildup, it'll be holding water. Then we went ahead, and in the master bathroom on the other side of the house, we have our camera already pushed through the line right there. We didn't record any of it yet. We just wanted to push it up to the T-junction where the two bathrooms come together at one point. So I believe we're at that spot with the other camera. So as we push down through this master bathroom, we'll see where they intersect and become one pipe for a point of reference. So we're going down this original two inch galvanized steel vent. Here's a little branch T to pick up the other vents for the other fixtures. Here's where the toilet dumps into the line right here. So this is officially the beginning of the sewer main. Right here, this vertical pipe will transition into the horizontal. Oops, our camera there is flip-flop there. I apologize. So, we're going down this sewer main here. We have a little turn on the line. This is all original three-inch cast iron pipe. As you can see, it looks nice and open right here. We don't have that much buildup of deposits or scaling forming on the system. We have a turn on the line right here, and they used a T-junction to create that turn. And as we go down this cast iron right here, we're coming up to the branch T that picks up the other bathroom. So you can see our other camera right here. We push that into the system and just left it right there against the T. So right there you can see that's where these two pipes become one. So this hall bathroom line, the cast iron looks very good. So what we're going to do before we continue down with this camera is we're going to go ahead and pause and move over to the first camera that's in the master bathroom to show that pathway. We'll pull the camera back in reverse to show that. Okay, so we're now here in the first camera that we just showed with the other one where they intersected. So this is again the sewer main right here, the T-junction where the two bathrooms come together. And this is the master bathroom that we'll be pulling back. So we're basically pulling back across the length of the house here um, from the one side to the other, not the full length. So we went ahead and ran a little bit of water again to just to clean off our camera lens. So. As soon as we back up on the line right here, you can see that this pipe does not appear to be nice and circular round like the first cast iron we just showed from this other bathroom. This is kind of ovalized. There's a lot of scale and buildup and deposits on all the walls of the pipe right here, and that's why it looks constricted. And as we back up here, you can see that we've got all these little pockets and pools of water that we're going to come across, basically. So we've got all this little damming effect um, by all those ridges and debris that's built up into the, into the cast iron pipe right here. So you can see the little mounding right there and then little lakes and pools of water that are just kind of staying in the pipe. Looks like it's just a little bit of flush debris right there. Again, some little areas of water here. We're kind of going up and over. You can see how the camera's reacting to that buildup. And there we go. We went back into another little puddle of water. So this side here, for some reason, I know it was built the same age, has a lot more buildup in this line. So you can see all that junk on the left and right-hand side. And then we've got all the water on the bottom because of these little undulations and that scale and deposit buildup is trapping some of that water. So obviously that's not great because it could lead to stoppages because things aren't going to flow down the pipe very well. Um, additionally, standing water in the cast iron pipe over time will obviously speed up the effect of it corroding and going bad. It's just steel pipe that eventually will rust and corrode, so it will speed up that process. 
you can see there's a lot of standing water um, for a long length a lot of buildup on the left and right hand sides right there as you can see so definitely recommend that this get hydro jetted out um, now obviously with older cast iron pipes um, you do need to be a little bit gentler with the PSI level that's used from the hydro jetter um, so that it basically doesn't be too aggressive and hurt the walls of the pipe or cause it to flake or peel or even crack or split. Um, so we definitely recommend that this get hydro jetted out and then it needs to be re-inspected with the camera and recorded. And normally the hydro jetter would need to run the camera so you can see that he's done a proper job but you would want to see the final recording after before and after um, this video after the cleaning to make sure that it looks good and no chunky debris was left in the line and that it made a difference. So again, just a lot of gunk built up in the line right there, as you can see, kind of fogging up our camera lens. So now we're making the transition right here, and we're coming back up the vent pipe right here. So this house, I'm sorry, this bathroom on this side has a three inch cast iron vent. So the other side is only a two inch, and it's a galvanized steel. This is a three inch cast iron. So we're gonna wipe off our camera lens, you can see. So here's this three inch vent. So there again, we're passed by the chimney with the other bathroom. Um, that's where we started from. Here's the front of the house over the garage right here. That other little pipe right there at the top of the screen, that's the vent for the kitchen. And then we have a cross on the other side um, where the other little two vent stacks are right by there's the water heater vent and the laundry vent. Those lines dump in here into this kitchen line and that also could be part of the reason why there's some of that gunk might be getting a lot of food and grease being put down that kitchen line and that might have added to why this side of the main has a lot more debris so now we're going to go ahead and pause again and move back over to the original camera on the other side of the house in the hall bathroom to continue down the main sewer line okay so here's where our other camera left off so as we push forward right here we're going to go through the rest of the sewer main that was not inspected where the two pipes come together. So we're going to continue down this line. Again, this is still all original 3-inch cast iron pipe. We do have, as you can see, some little undulations. The camera's kind of bobbing up and down. Still a little bit better than the, the run from the master bat, but this one has a little bit. But this line here doesn't need to be hydro jetted so far. Like a little bit of debris in the line. I don't think that's a root growing in the line. That looks like that might be some little foreign debris that got into the system there somehow and flushed. Can't say for sure though. We'll locate to see where this is at. It does appear that it's coming in from the top unless it's laying in there perfect. Um, so to travel this far down the pipe is a little odd. If it's outside the house, um, it could be uh, right at a joint or a coupling that's gotten weak and maybe a root is trying to grow in, but we don't think that's a root right now. Okay, here we have the T-junction right here. And we're going to continue down this main sewer here. Okay, we've got some more debris right there. Same thing, one little piece, so I don't know looks almost identical to what the other thing was so I don't know if that's one root trying to get in the line or if it's some type of object that was flushed down the pipe it's obviously stuck on the line right there hard to say what that is but it's possible because we see these two little items that the hydro jetter actually is going to want to run through these two areas past the T-junction where we just ran across these two little stringy objects um, to blow them out of the line. And again, we can't say for sure if those look like roots or not. It doesn't appear to be the normal way roots get into the system and the way they expand out, so I don't think those are. A little bit of build up on this here, but again, still not as bad as the first run. But you can see right there, there's some little bit of mounding, so a light pass with the jetter may be good. There's some more little strings. So this one we can actually see when we first came by. So 
could have been some dental floss, um, could have been part of a feminine hygiene product. So I'm going to say that those two previous ones we passed were probably some type of string or object. I mean, it could be literally a shoelace, dental floss, actual string, or something from a feminine product. A little bit of debris right here in the bottom of the pipe. A bit of mounding there. Accumulated scale and deposits again. Again, we can see a little piece of string on the left hand side so definitely looks like somebody's been flushing dental floss or something else down the line so obviously the only things other than liquid that should be going down are feces toilet paper and then some kitchen food and debris other than some laundry detergent um, material uh, has some soaps and oils and emollients in it but no other object or paper product should be ever be going down the system Line still intact, completely functional. Okay, now we're coming up to the property line clean out. So right here, I believe there was another camera company that was hired uh, to do this inspection. They got to this property line clean out and they couldn't get past this point. So right here, the pipe goes up and down. It goes up for original clean out that was then capped during the testing process and when we build homes. And then it makes the turn here to go deeper to then go basically catch the rest of the lateral that's at a, a greater depth when it comes off the street. So right here, we have a full 90 degree turn that we have to make. And so a lot of camera systems have difficulty. Now we've initially made this first turn. We'll see if we can get the rest of it. We're going vertically down right here. There's gonna be another 90 here coming up. Here's the next 90. And we've gotten through part of that right here, but we still have to make a uh, transition going across horizontally uh, for a good distance here before we get to the end of the lateral. And also to see if the pipe in the street is still clay or if it's been relined um, or been replaced with green bell PVC um, that the city and their contractors sometimes do. So right here at the bottom of this 90, um, we can see things look good so far in this part of the cast iron where it's about to continue down the line. Um, but right now we can't push any further. So what we're going to do before we try uh, another camera in conjunction with this is we're going to go ahead and pause the video and we're going to turn on a bunch of water to see if the running water helps uh, reduce the friction and helps push and move the camera farther out um, right here where we're at from this point. Okay, you can't see much right now, but we want to just show this process to see if we're able to get through or not. So here's the camera. We're pulling it back just a little bit, trying to get a running start to push through this 90 and farther down the line. But when there's two 90s in a row like this, it's very difficult for most of the cameras to continue down the system because they can only be so stiff to make through the curves, but then they need that for pushability. So you can see we've got all this water running, but we only got a little bit past that 90 still, not much further. And so we're going to go ahead and pause the video, and we're now going to hook up a different camera system to see if it can maneuver through these two turns and past this point right here. Okay, so we've gotten a second camera riding piggyback essentially um, in front of the first camera system together and we got about 17 feet out further um, into the clay pipe. So as we kind of look down the system, we're going to go ahead and turn on our little locator beacon. Sorry, we're going to shut that off. We get a little flash. So it appears there's, is the next coupling that is coming up. We're going to do this one more time that there's probably some roots in this coupling that we can see forward here. So the light kind of dims. So this is a very small camera. It's basically a 7 8 inch camera. It's not self-leveling and the lights aren't as bright as the first camera. But it's the only camera that can get through the type of turns at this distance. So basically from the retaining wall, uh, right where the sidewalk begins, from there out to the middle of the street where we can see the manholes are, which is the city line, is exactly almost 30 feet. Now we were able to get our camera um, 
17 feet out essentially past um, that retaining wall area where that cast iron is about to end after a few feet and become clay. Now we had water running which is now all off so now we're going to start to pull back and reverse so again in front of the camera there's approximately about another 10 to 12 feet of clay pipe which means there's going to be about two or three more couplings where the clay pieces of pipe come together because the longest length of clay pipe is only four feet so as we pull back and reverse here now this is the clay sewer main and you can see right here we have massive roots intruding in the system so you can see that it's a hub right there where two pieces of clay come together and that's why when we were toggling that camera uh, with this little locator beacon and the flash of light kind of gets brighter for half a second we believe 100 percent that that next coupling a uh, foot and a half two feet in front of the camera we couldn't get to definitely has more roots intruding there so as you can see right here this is blocking almost all of the pipe uh, it's obviously backed up with some paper and feces um, in the web of roots but it's at least um, you know over 75 percent clogged right there so we're going to now continue to pull back on these two cameras that are riding together here here's our next coupling and you can see there's also roots intruding there so that's why we know uh, from that little toggle trick we were trying to do to look farther down the pipe at that one section that every coupling here essentially has roots in it and the property line clean out is going to need to be brought to surface so that this line can be one cleaned out because it needs to be cleaned out before somebody moves in and tries to use facilities on a heavy basis. Um, it can then either be maintained uh, with a foaming chemical treatment that even the homeowner can do or hire us or any other plumber to do and that will need to be done every night to ten months so essentially a little less than once every year or, and, and about three times every two years so we'll come back across this four inch clay so that was the second intrusion we passed by but we know there was a third one farther down we can pretty much guarantee okay here's another full intrusion that we can see right here 100% verified at this coupling and that's blocking maybe 40 45 percent of the system right there And here's our transition to clay pipe. So again, this is pretty much going to be under the city sidewalk. Now this camera, because it's so small, has a very weak beacon, um, which all the cameras have uh, for locating as a built-in sound that sends out a frequency. We tried locating to get a ballpark depth in the street, but it's just too deep for this miniature style camera. Now as we back up this cast iron right here, this is about where we left off with the first camera because we couldn't even see that other root intrusion. So you can see we do travel for a few feet, um, almost maybe across most of the sidewalk actually. And then right here, we're going to start coming up this 90 degree transition here. There we go. Now we're coming up this straight vertical pipe. And then right here is the property line clean out tee that we got with even the first camera and we're able to make the turn essentially. So right here on the top of the screen is the bottom of the pipe, um, and it, but it opens up obviously there. So we'll go ahead and relocate this. The other plumbing, uh, or not plumbing company, a uh, camera inspection company put a green flag by the grass, but I don't believe they marked the flag with the, the depth of the pipe, and we want to mark that for us or any other plumbing company because, yes, this will need to be uh, brought to surface, and then we'll use either a chain knocker system or a hydro jetter to rip out all those roots in their entire we would record that on video or whoever's going to do it needs to to show proof of that and then we would usually do one foaming chemical treatment right there on the spot um, if nobody needed to use facilities for at least six hours after that initial cleaning um, and again the other line does need to be cleaned up as well um, so that either could be hydro jetted or also actually a light chain knocker to clean up the other main from the master bathroom so we're just gonna pull all the way back out of this cast iron here because we know we started with the camera, of course, inside the sewer main. So we just want to show proof um, that we're still at this property, of course. So this has all been viewed. And again, the camera is not self-leveling, so the image is all inverted. But we're moving through this quickly just because this has already been recorded. We just want to come back out to the rooftop area here to show where we're at with our equipment at this property. Okay, we got about another 15 feet to pull out. We're coming up the vertical vent now. Here we go. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. So here, again, with this other little camera, sort of wipe off the lens. So we're here on the rooftop. We went down the same original two inch, but we just had to use a series of cameras. You can see we've got five of them up here um, to try to get through that section. So we couldn't get all the way out to the city. Um, we've got one other camera on that we'll try to go ahead and put in front of this one to see if we can get a little bit further. But at this point, we don't really need to because we know that all the clay pipe does have severe root intrusions. It's not broken. It's just that the hubs of the clay, uh, they are just a lubricated... Um, rubber boot and it's very susceptible to letting roots get through the line so um, we're going to go ahead and um, mark the property line clean out with the flag at the front yard um, to get that exact depth and write it on the flag so we're going to go ahead and pause the video okay so we pushed the cameras back out again and we went ahead and tried to modify it to give a little bit more distance possibly we are maybe able to get a few more feet out so we just have the water finally settling down that we're using to help push out so we're now going to come back in reverse and see from the really large intrusion that was blocking most of the pipe if we did get past um, that point to another coupling that may or may not have had roots as well so we're coming back in reverse so there is root intrusion right there and I don't believe we passed that one so I do think we got out that few more feet that we were trying to get out so you can see right there I think that's the one that when we were trying to do that little flickering with the lights um, was where we could see so as we back up here about another three four feet we should come up to either another coupling or the big one with all the roots that we originally got by and yet there we go right there so that's that one intrusion. I can see it actually identical as far as the look. That is definitely where we got pie uh, the first time, but we didn't get to that next intrusion. Now we can't get farther down from there, but at least we even got to that one. So we know that there's still, again, possibly two to three more couplings. One would be the last coupling at the T-junction to the city, which is still the homeowner's responsibility. So we have, this would be the second intrusion um, all the way out that we've come across. So we'll show this one more time. There's the third intrusion on the system that we've passed coming in reverse. There's the fourth and there's the cast iron. So we have four definitive root intrusions and then we know again that the, um, the line um, has a couple more junctions it could be so it all needs to be cleaned up here regardless. So we are now going to go ahead and pause, pull out the cameras and we'll go ahead and relocate the property line clean out for that which needs to be brought to surface. Okay, so we have our original camera right here in the horizontal line right before you get to the property line clean out, which is before the retaining wall and then the sidewalk. So right here we pull back just about a foot or so barely and the pipe is right about 33 inches deep. We're getting two feet nine inches deep. Um, when we push forward here just this less than a foot um, at the property line clean out our initial reading was closer to three feet um, but we always double check it because sometimes the brass cap and the heavy metal uh, sitting above the sawn gives you a few inches off so we've marked this in the front yard with some green paint dots for this horizontal pipe the path of it and then um, right here at the end we've marked where this property line clean out is with a flag denoting PLCO standing for property line clean out at that 36 inch which is our initial depth reading but we also wrote underneath it 32 inches and we'll bring our camera down to ground level um, the other company was out which i believe was uh somebody pros company um, their markings were off so we'll show their flag we didn't touch their flag but we double checked our readings and it's definitely a foot or two in front of them so i don't know what they were marking if they were marking the end of the bottom 90 but their flag is not where the property line clean out is so we'll show that as well in case that's what they were stating in their reports so we're going to pause and move down to ground level okay so we're now here at ground level we just came off the rooftop there's a flag right to the right of the front steps right there uh, that the other company put in and here's their other flag um, so it's about 18 inches in front of where their clean out actually is. I don't know what that marking is for them. I'm not going to say I didn't do the job. So, right here, we have four little paint dots in a row. 
on the grass, that's denoting the path of the pipe, and we double check that. And it's right about, again, 33 inches deep where we're getting above those little dots. We originally got about 36 inches um, at the property line clean out tee. So we have the little bit larger painted circle at the end of these four dots. And then we have our flag here denoting, again, property line clean out, PLCO at 36 inches deep, underneath 32 inches. That's denoting the, probably the truer depth. And again, the pipe also has a cap to the top of it. So that needs to be brought to surface because as this goes vertically down and then 90s across a few feet of cast iron and then once you get to the retaining wall on the sidewalk then it turns to clay and runs clay out all the way to the very middle of the street we've got all those intrusions in the line so this clean out is what needs to be brought to surface so that it can be cleaned up and also maintained um, if they don't want to maintain the line then when this is brought to surface after the roots are removed then the line could be relined um, the pipe will basically get another coating um, with a cloth jacket and then a resin gets poured in and it creates a new wall inside there which prevents any roots from ever getting inside the system. A lot more expensive process but that would solve ever having to maintain the line in any way shape or form. Uh, but again the line is not breaking and cracking the roots are getting in from the hubs um, of each piece of clay pipe because of the poor um, design of how those um, are interconnected. So that concludes the recording for this property.